go there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a really quick video just to show you something that I've released through my business, BIM Guru, um, a free Revit sample model. So I won't take too much of your time up. I'll just quickly show you what's contained in it, how you can access it. So this is for my business, um, but in this case, it's something that's free through my business. Most stuff I've made so far has been charged um, and people have really enjoyed what I've released so far. But I decided to release a sample of some of my content and a model that people can use for learning about Revit. Because one of my business's goals is also just to educate people, um, even if they're not already you know, consulted by me. So I'm announcing that I have rebuilt the Autodesk Basic Sample Project. Um, this is a very classic Revit model built by Autodesk quite a long time ago. And whilst it is a nice little model for learning Revit, I wanted to turn it into something that's a little bit more reflective of a project of this scale and how we might reflect it at a design development or later design phase. So it does have documentation, it can be rendered in Enscape. It's a pretty good um, little reference, I think. In this case, it's a remake of a project. It's built to my BIM Guru standard. So whilst it's not a, com a complete template, it does have aspects of what I use in my main templates for my clients and also on my store. Um, it doesn't have anything that's the same. It's, it's all slightly adjusted to suit the project scale. I always believe templates, whilst they're a good starting point, they do need little changes on certain projects to suit them. So I have made some tweaks here. So if you already have purchased my main template, don't worry, it's not the same thing. Just being released for free, it's definitely a strip back. Um, it's been coordinated and redesigned as well. So it's not just the same project. Um, I have coordinated the structure into the, in the design. And I've quite heavily changed the function of a lot of the rooms and the layouts and some of the design features. So you'll find it's a, it's a pretty interesting little design, especially even if you know the basic sample project, you'll probably find it quite interesting to see just what I've done as a, you know, practicing, not a practicing architect, but a, a graduate architect um, to the design. And it's built for Revit 2020, so you will need 2020, unfortunately, to open this. Um, so if you're working in an earlier build, maybe it'll encourage you to leg up and get onto the new build. And it is 100% um, Enscape compatible. So it has RPC content that will render and it's gonna look good at night. You can turn on the artificial lights, it'll have people. Um, so pretty fun. I've made a little show reel on my BIM Guru YouTube page. So check it out if you're interested. As well as that, it includes documentation and also some pointers on how I set up the file. So some little help, help notes. And it's 100% free. That's the best part about it, I guess. Um, so far, I think about 200 people <laughs> have downloaded it in less than half a day. So it's it's definitely you know flying out the door, which is cool. Um, lots of students, lots of graduates, and that's really who I want to really benefit from this the most. So to, to purchase it, well, to purchase with a 100% discount, um, head over to my website, bimguru.com.au, head over to the store, and you'll find this product, the BIM Guru Sample Project. Now, whilst it, whilst it says it's $50, which is what I would charge for it if I wasn't giving it away for free, um, you can apply a discount to it. So in this case, you're going to need to apply the promo code I want to be a guru with an exclamation mark. So if you apply this during the purchase process, it will take off the $50 and make it free. And you won't have to use your card. Um, so if you don't have a credit card, that's that's fine. It won't be a problem. You'll be able to just get it for free. As long as you have a member uh, membership account on my website, um, that's pretty much all you need. So let's actually explore the model. I'll just quickly show you what you get. So um, you get a few support files, like a basic material library, a basic keynotes file and the image maps to support the materials. But obviously the most important part is you get the model. So this is the home screen. It has a bit of information about the model as well as some information about the licensing of the model. So if you are intending to try and use this for purposes of business related matters, you may not be able to um, without my permission. So definitely read the license carefully and make sure that you don't go outside it, obviously. Otherwise I'll find you. No, I'm just kidding, <laughs> but I might. Um, so I've got these little helper markers all around the sheets in the project. So if you click on them, you'll find little notes left by me just about the model, how I've done things, best practices. And these might help better educate you about certain special things about the model. If you do want to turn them off, you can just go to edit type and just tick off this visible box and they'll just globally be hidden. They're still there, but the, the marker's just off. But we'll just leave them on for now. So you'll find a lot of views in the project set up by view type. So you'll learn a little bit more about how I break down views in projects typically and how I relate view templates back to view types to keep everything really organized. It's definitely a standard I don't see a lot of people using, but it works perfectly for me um, and perfectly for pretty much all my clients so far as well. I use this no matter whether I'm working for a business, for myself, um, you know, for a client, I use the same system every time and it always works. Um, so in this case, uh, maybe just first of all, I'll just have a look in 3D. 
So if I go to the standard working view, you can see roughly the scope of the project. It's very similar to the original one. I've taken out some of the tackier design features, like there's no wind turbines, there's no solar panels. Um, it's more like a standard house. Um, and I've taken some liberty in the design features. So for example, I've introduced new skylights, but I've also laid out some of the rooms internally a little bit differently. I've changed the materiality of the project as well and integrated some different elements. For example, little services quadrant here. Um, redesigned the, the entry bridge. Um, if I hide this roof, you'll see that I have reintroduced all the structure for the project. Um, but if I check one of these families, notice it's my family, it's a BIM Guru family. So you'll get little samples of my content throughout this model. Um, I haven't used, um, I think the only Autodesk family left in here is the, uh, the truss. That's the only thing that is Autodesk specific here. And even then I've just I, I, I updated that to my standard anyway with object styles, materials, essentially. Everything else is pretty much custom to my standard and my system. So you will get little samples of my content. You won't get a lot of it, I'll be honest, because I can't just go giving away products that people are buying for free. Um, but at the same time, you'll get little excerpts of them. So it might give you some incentive to check out some of my paid content as well, if you find this useful. Perfectly up to you though, no pressure, up to you. Um, anyway, uh, let's have a look at maybe some of the sheets and the documentation. So I do have a, what I would call a full documentation set for design development. So it goes all the way down to one to 50. Um, it doesn't contain things like wall sections and joinery details, some of those really specific things, but it does go all the way down to room layouts. So it's obviously got um, you know standard things like a cover sheet with a, every page has a title block. So it is a proper documentation set. Um, it has things like site plans and schedules. Um, you can see these little help markers just all throughout all the sheets with little notes that I've left as I go. Um, the ground floor plan, for example, you can see it's quite quite thoroughly documented with a good amount of information, um, which I guess the original sample project doesn't really have. Um, so, and that's no fault of the project itself. It's just the level of detail Autodesk decided to include in this project. I decided to go all the way <laughs> and properly document it. So you'll find things like reflected ceiling plans, again, properly documented roof plans. So things that aren't in the sample project originally, um, things like elevations that are, but obviously updated to my standards, so a lot more documentation on them. You'll find keynote legends on the most pages. So I have a fully set up keynoting system in here. Um, so if you tag something here, the keynote appears on the page. Um, things like sections, so you'll see the sections are a lot more rich and detailed than maybe the original project was. Uh, a lot of schedules too. So if you're trying to learn about Revit scheduling, this is probably a great project for you. It's got a full, a full window schedule, a full room schedule, a door schedule, openings, and a fixture schedule. So a multi-category takeoff. So this might help you learn about how schedules can be set up in Revit as well. And then I finally have just some detailed pages for room layouts. So I document a kitchen, for example, and also just some wet areas like an ensuite in the bathroom, and also just a, just a laundry and a powder room. So if you're doing little small resi jobs, this might help you learn a little bit more about how you can document these sort of spaces, which are quite common to all those projects. Um, and it just shows you, I guess, how I would do it on a typical project. As well as this, there's a little um, gross floor area plan. So I do show you how I use area plans. Um, unlike rooms, it's a little bit of a different system. And then just some general axonometrics. And it's important to note, I have actually modeled pretty much all the structure and then some. So I've added a little bit of structure to the design. Um, I have kept most of the original intent of Autodesk structure. I have rationalized it a little bit. So for example, now these are actually on stilts. Um, so originally they were just exposed piles, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. So you'll find some things have been resolved um, to make the design more functional. And then also just some 3D renders. Um, I might show you how I made these renders because this is actually done in Enscape. So if you go to a 3D view, by default, you're just gonna see the default documentation content. If I just toggle this design options down here, I can change from documented to Enscape. And behind the scenes, there's an entire set of Enscape elements hiding. So if you go to the working view for Enscape up here, and you just start Enscape, it's gonna start from this design option instead because that, that view has been set up to always show the Enscape option. And instead of seeing just your boring Revit content, you're gonna see a proper Enscape model. So if you're learning about Enscape, I hope this model also might teach you about things like Enscape lighting, Enscape RPC content placement, and also just how materials look in Enscape versus Revit. So I do have a full setup of materials in this model, uh, but you can see it's quite a nice little, quite a nice little scene in Enscape. Not, not overly detailed, um, like I haven't went too crazy on the site, 
but it's quite um quite nice and the materials look okay it's not like photorealistic but I would say it's you know quite quite nice and if we go inside you'll start to see some of the some of the design changes that I've made so everything's a lot more rational um, in layout than the original and obviously you can get some nice little nice little scenes if you change time of day you'll get little moments where you get some nice lighting lighting moments so I did try to reflect some of the the areas in the design that are a bit more opportunistic and things like wet areas that you know, look okay they've got a couple of towers in them but I didn't go too crazy and really high ceilings in some of these spaces actually so I have included skylights in here whoops little little naked guy <laughs> it's got some undies on at least um, so you will get some really nice little moments in um in the design so you can find at certain times of day you'll get get little little sort of portals through the ceiling so um so it's a really nice little design actually I really came to appreciate um, the project for for some of its design merit whilst I was sort of redesigning it and you'll find that it's just been generally cleaned up as well so you'll have a nice proper little kitchen here now whereas the original was a little bit more generic um, and I've also just taken some some liberties in the spatial design so there used to be a really gaudy 60s fireplace here um, I just turned that into a, a swanky little bachelor pad with some sliding doors so hopefully it shows you a little bit that maybe, you know, I, I do have some architectural ability as well. I'm not just talking about BIM all the time. Um, and also at night too, there's full artificial lighting as well. So this can be a little bit of a challenge for people learning Enscape to get proper lighting in the scene. So this will show you how I light my models as well. And you can see it's really quite a quite a competent little little setup that I've got going here. So, um, so hopefully it helps teach you about Revit. BIM, Enscape, documentation, architecture, all sorts of things. My goal here is just purely to educate because I felt like the industry really needed a couple of model references like this. Um, so I look forward to using it in future videos um, as well so that you can follow along with me. And I'll probably use it in some of my online courses that I'm working on as well, given that it's built to my standard and has a lot of um, data set up that would usually be how I work with my data and my content. So I really encourage you to check it out. Again, it's free, so no catch. Um, I just want people to learn more about Revit and it also helps promote my brand and what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, I really hope it helps you out there and spread it around, let graduates and students know about it. That's really the goal of what I've done here. I want it just to spread and people to find out about it and to learn about it. And I look forward to seeing what people think of it. So that this presentation will be on GitHub, but again, the files are on my online store. And don't forget about that promo code. I hope no one actually pays for it. <laughs> I mean, if you do, whoops, but... I'm not, I'm not trying to trick anyone into that. Anyway, um, thanks for watching today. If you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. I look forward to bringing this model to some of my future videos. In particular, I've got a little series on a program called Zuva next week, which I'll be using this model specifically for, so you can follow along with it now if you have this model. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.